Hello and welcome back to my series on my renovation at uh, Avalon Zelena. Uh, this presentation will be about the interior doors and the baseboard installation. Um, so this is the uh, original project plan, um, that, uh, or the latest one um, from before. But I've made some revisions to this just based on the realities. Uh, we're right now here at 14, but actually many of the other steps, this um, uh, closets and shelves have been postponed uh, because they can actually really be done later. Uh, I need budget you know, to, for the other things. And then electrical fixtures are in progress. Bathroom is still in progress. It's working, but there's still things to be done. The balcony glass and the window treatments now I, I'll, I've combined in another uh, step. And then um, the kitchen is uh, just started, and um, I've started ordering some furniture as well. So this is the revision, the project plan, um, as it is now. I marked tiles and windows and door ledges as red because I'm still missing a door ledge in the small bedroom. That should have been done a long time ago. I think it's going to come next week. The apartment can function without it, but it doesn't look, look that great. So that's just been marked red because it's been long overdue. I mean, here I have red for like some issues or unknowns, but here it's more for um, that it's, it's very, very overly delayed. Uh, we have, uh, this video will be about, again, about the interior doors and baseboards, which are done. Uh, except for, you know, I think there'll have to be some baseboard around the kitchen area, and that'll be taken care of, as well as the trim and everything. Um, but that'll be kind of fall into the kitchen project. So that will be separated out. So, will it, you know, when the kitchen will have its own baseboard requirements, its own trim requirements, that's all included there. But all the other trim minus the kitchen is done. And then uh, electrical fixtures are still ongoing. You know, we still have to um, get the, uh, in the in the bathroom. We have to get the washing machine working, and then of course the kitchen has some electrical needs. And then the living room isn't powered on yet. The circuit um, the circuit is off, so I'm leaving that open. And the bathroom is uh, even though it's usable, it's still um, a work in progress. The um, bathroom glass still needs to come in, and the, uh, as I said before, the washer and dryer. Uh, needs to be hooked up. The electrical, um, the plumbing the hookup is there, but the electrical still needs to be uh, completed. The outlet covers, I believe, need to be installed. And then we're also doing some repairs. You know, there's always inevitably some damage. You know, so some repainting will have to be done. There will have to be some, I think some of the molding can be better joined. So, and then there's a lot of cleanup. Um, it's getting, uh, it getting to be a lot of debris piling up and everything. And what we do here is we check with the neighbors so we can all kind of get a group deal and we kind of coordinate with the neighbors to throw out uh, throw out the building material and building debris. So that's uh, where we're at there. Um, I'm actually in the apartment now. I've moved in a little bit. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's uh, only the bathroom and the two bedrooms are kind of usable. The rest of it's very dusty because it, it's still a lot of construction dust, but it's better than paying rent. And this plan is kind of more realistic too, to put the closets and shelves here at um, afterwards, after the move-in. Because uh, that's like the IKEA thing, you know, they come and they just uh, snap it together, you know, they measure everything, build it in the shop, and then they deliver it. And then the technicians just, uh, you know, put it together like IKEA style, so it's not so messy. So that can actually be done after move-in. And then um, balcony glass is done, but I'm still waiting for the window treatments. And that will probably be done after um, step 17 is complete and everything is very clean. Otherwise, all the dust will go on the, on the um, curtains. And then the kitchen is uh, right now being built. You know, we've gotten the appliances in. Uh, we've ordered the cabinets. Uh, some of the prep work, the gas lines have been readjusted a little bit um, in the kitchen. Not the main gas line, but there's some small gas line adjustments have been made. And I think some electrical work will um, be done as well. And then the kitchen will eventually be installed. AC unit will... I'll think about that after everything else is done, but you know, I would like to get that done um, actually sooner than later, just to be done with it. Now, the thing about doors, interior doors and, and trim, it's a, actually quite an important step. The doors, you can see, come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, um, all kinds, you know, all kinds of colors, shades, textures, materials. I ended up going with this ML34, kind of this uh, Pennsylvania Quaker, design or they call it shaker doors. I don't know. It's kind of um, classic American. Uh, I like uh, in Ukraine, you see a lot of this stuff with like little windows and things on. I don't know if that's to indicate that the light is on in the room. Um, you see this more in Europe. I haven't seen this in America so much. Or in Norway, they just generally tend to go for a plain door. 
you know, uh, where I've been living before. But uh, in Ukraine, you get all kinds of variety of doors. It's uh, quite interesting. I mean, they even have two tone colors, and um, it's it's a lot lot different here with the door styles. So, but I just zoomed in on this one. I know 34 kind of reminded me of what I'm used to. And you can see here is how it looks in reality. And then you also have to choose the hardware. You know, so there's a ton of variety of the door hardware as well. And it's important to actually go in person and try it out to see how your hand fits around it. Because some of it, it's too close to the wall and you can't get your hands in there. Um, uh, but they have all kinds of shapes. But I just kind of went with uh, something very neutral. And so the guy comes from the door company to do the measuring, you know, very early on to measure the openings. And he actually came again after the floor was put down uh, to just verify that uh, he verified the measurements. And then um, after installing the doors, you can see here they're installing the baseboards. Uh, to uh, baseboards is the trim uh, that joins the floor to the wall to kind of get a transition. I don't think we'll have it in the bathroom. I have to check. Um, I don't see a need for it. Um, but I don't know if we need it to just have continuity with the rest of the house or not. Um, that's always something that can be done later. I mean, it's not um, going to affect the living situation. It's decorative. So uh, you can see how they did it. So it looks really good. You know, the floors, everything. It's a really nice style, classic American style. Here, you know, it's a little, my little piece of America in Ukraine. Um, and then... This is the doors. They're magnetic. Um, these uh, latches are magnetic, so when you turn this, it doesn't come out, but when it goes in there, it locks in place because the magnet's drawn to the metal. You can actually play with this. You can use a key or any other metal thing to draw this out and see how it works, but uh, it's it's nice. I guess it's uh, less uh, noisy or something or less uh, destructive than a, a traditional door. Um, and probably locks better as well. It kind of goes into the groove a little better. I didn't know about this. This was a pleasant surprise. And it got like a little gold seal, so these must have been like, you know, really good doors. A friend of mine helped me arrange this. Um, the doors were around, uh, I think, $600 a piece, six, 700 bucks a piece. They're not cheap. Um, the cheaper doors look cheap, so you know, I just decided to get a little bit better doors because this is one of the details people will kind of zoom in on. So that's all I got about doors and trim. If you're interested in um, learning more about the design and build services we can offer you, we haven't started this formally, but I'm open to uh, discussion. You know, if you need help, I can refer you to people. And um, it's a business I would like to get into at some point in the future. So if you're interested, let me know. If you like what we're doing, like our way of thinking, our project plan, let me know and I can, I can hook you up. Um, I, I did meet the other day with some people who were interested in buying apartments in Ukraine that I met through the videos um, or through the YouTube video I did with a blogger. You know, there's a um, blogger here in Lviv, that Lviv girl. Um, and, uh, but the main thing is you have to have the right bank account, as I emphasize. You have to be set up properly before you can even think about um, getting an apartment in Ukraine. You have to have everything. It's very bureaucratic here. But once you get through that, once you set up the right bank accounts and the right, uh, you have your tax ID number, um, then it gets better, but uh, that's actually, a, for me at least, was a, quite a difficult step. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching, and um, hope to see you soon, and give me a like and subscribe.